Hey everyone. Uh, as you can see this week I'm on holiday in sunny Auckland. It's a few clouds but not too bad. Visiting family. So um, I wanted to put together this quick video because last week we talked about uh, being able to stop saying yes. And so the contrarian in me this week needed to record the video that uh, just does the opposite, right? Always say yes. Um, and I've talked about this a little bit before, but today what I want to share with you is a couple of things. And, um, and I'm sharing it with you because we're all disruptors, right? We can hold cognitive dissonance. We can hold two things to be true at the same time, right? And so here it is. So at the same time as you're stopping saying yes, and you're making sure that you're saying no, or you're not agreeing and signing up to things, um, at the same time, we want to always be making sure that we're saying yes. And so I want to share two things with you today. The first is what I call the yesable proposition. It's a really important tool when you're looking at putting things in front of people. And then the second is about how do we say yes to people even when we don't want to be in that situation. So uh, the, uh, the, first, the first thing I wanted to share was this idea of the yesable proposition, right? So um, what that is is that we want to be thinking about every time we put something in front of somebody, every time we put a decision in front of someone, um, every time we're presenting information, we want to be thinking about what is the yesable proposition for them? What is something that they can say yes to? That has to be something that's within their scope of uh, their role, of their their uh, hierarchy within the organisation, of their decision making capability. You know, sometimes there's policies and procedures, sometimes there's emotional blockers, sometimes there's just context stuff going on that means that people aren't ready and willing to sign up for the thing that you're putting in front of them, right? So this idea of a yesable proposition is really about when we are crafting something to put in front of someone for decision, how do we craft it in a way that means that they are able to say yes to that? How are we able to craft something that they are able to sign up to? And so as an example, it may be way too much for you to ask your call center manager to sign up to a demand capture process, um, but it might be just enough for that call center manager to run a trial for a two week period where they try something a little bit different with the way they're working. So this idea of the yesable proposition is about molding the idea or the piece of work that you've got into a way that the person that you're needing to get on board is able to say yes to it. It's not too big an ask for them. Um, and it might be that maybe they need more time or they may need more understanding. Um, but you stop lobbying for a black and white answer. You stop lobbying for this idea of yes, no on your idea. And you start to think about how do I craft this in a way that it's playing to that particular stakeholder's motivators, um, what they're going through at the moment, you know, the context of the organization and the environment, all of those things. So that's the idea of the yesable proposition. And it's a really, really important tool when, um, when you're putting something in front of somebody for decision. The, how do we do it in a way that means that they're able to sign up for it? They're able to say yes, because all of the things that you're putting in front of them are an ask that's within their control. It's within their sphere of influence. They're, 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 they're ready and capable to do that. So that's the first piece. And then the second bit is really about how do we always say yes to people? So uh, it's this idea, and I've talked about this before, of you know, somebody comes to you with something, and uh, often as somebody who's working to make change in the organization, you might not necessarily agree with the idea. Uh, I had one example, I, a, a colleague that um, had responded to me, I was teaching this organization how to put in place a prioritization forum. And um, so we called all the right people into the room and we were, we were doing our single backlog list and we were having the conversations and the, um, and the juggling that was happening every couple of weeks and, and it was working well. And it was, we were also in that perfectly natural position where um, early on when you start this work, often what you find is that stuff doesn't move very quickly. Um, and so you end up kind of shuffling deck chairs or, um, you know, you, you have kind of scrappy conversations because people aren't aware of what's going on in other parts of the business. And so you spend a lot of time explaining to people what the thing is that you're trying to do. Um, you might have people that are not consistently turning up. And so you end up doing a bit of a rehash of stuff each time because you've got new people and you need to bring them up to speed. And so when you're asking a question about does this thing go above or below, the other things that we've got on our list, people then need to kind of be brought up to speed of, oh, can you remind me what that one is? So we're in the middle of like the, the absolute messy middle of this with this particular client. And I got feedback from a very senior person in the organization who said, look, I really think that what would be worth doing is if everybody just prioritized within their own business unit, what their top thing, two, 10 things are. And then we just bring that to the forum and we tell people that that's what we're doing. 
And every bone in my body was like, oh, we've been here, right? Like everybody's got their list. And what happens is that, you know, we, we all go off and do our own things. And that's what's causing the conflict because everybody's got 15 things on. And so part of the pain that I could see that this company was feeling was that all of a sudden we had it all on the table, right? And it's all too much. And so this person was wanting to dismantle that forum and go back to, well, let's just do the top 10 things that we've all got each and we report in and we tell everybody what we're doing. Trouble is that was never going to work in this situation because it was one delivery team that had all of those sources of work. And so whilst this person was seeing a problem around this is a messy meeting and it takes a long time and I don't feel like we're getting anywhere, um, the reality was that dismantling that and going back out to individual businesses managing their own projects was not going to solve the problem because it still came back to that one development team, that one supplier that was going to be hit with all the requests anyway. And so all you were doing was shifting the prioritization discussion from a place of visibility where every business could see within their um, within their, the whole, um, every business could see what was going on and we could make decisions about prioritizing that work. All you were doing was shifting that conversation from that forum where it was visible to just push it back down to the supplier. And we were going to go back to this way of operating where it was just squeaky wheel, right? The, the supplier has 10 different uh, businesses coming to them saying, I want all these things and these are my priorities and it's just the loudest voice wins. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, how do I say no? But at the same time, say yes. <laughs> because, you know, when you when you go back to somebody and you say, appreciate your feedback and no, um, you know, you're setting up that environment. And this particular personality, I think, wouldn't have responded well to, um, to I guess, getting into that back and forth and that argument. And it, it just wasn't going to work. So it's like, how do I... Do I go back with something that this person can say yes to? And 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 equally, how do I reflect on how I am able to say yes to this person who's coming to me, who has real problems to solve, right? Like, just because the solution that she was proposing wasn't something that gelled with where I was trying to take the team and lead that change, didn't, excuse me, <clears throat> didn't invalidate the problems that she was seeing, right? Like, we're wasting a lot of time in meetings. People aren't clear on priorities, I just want to get my stuff done. Like those problems are still there and those problems are still valid. So we needed to find a way that I could speak to that and feel like we were getting, um, she was getting the progress that she needed on solving those problems. But at the same time, do it in a way that gelled with continuing to maintain that visibility. And so there were sort of three or four dot points in the email and I won't bore you with the details, but I basically went back to each and every dot point and said, yes, and so that first dot point around, you know, we're spending a lot of time in meetings and there's a lot of senior people and we could be spending our time elsewhere and doing better things rather than spending an hour every two weeks doing this meeting that feels like we get nowhere. Yeah, I agree. You know, people should be coming to this forum, dot point number two, with their 10 things that's the most important to their business and we should just be going away and doing those. Yeah, I agree. People should be coming to the meeting prepared and they should absolutely bring their list of their 10 most important things. That's what I'm expecting you to do when you turn up to the forum. You know, dot point number three, well, really, I don't think we, we need that, that um, the forum or we don't need the, well, okay, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. If all you're saying is that it's spending a lot of time and you know what your priorities are anyway, the reason that I've got it there is that I'm wanting to cultivate this visibility. So, if you're not getting visibility of everything that's going on within the rest of those 10 business units and the visibility of what your delivery team is working on, then help me understand, um, like, what do you think is a better way to do this? Like, I'm always open to ideas. And so all of a sudden, I turned this email, which should, which, you know, every, as I said, every bone in my body was saying, I just don't want to do this. This just needs to be a, just a no, 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 into yes, 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 yes. Um, and I think the other aspect was that it was, you know, that, that third piece around if you're not getting the visibility, reframing the intent of the meeting and y y the, the question that was posed around, help me understand a different way to do this or a different way to get this information. Like there's an ask back on that person. So you're not just dumping feedback and expecting us to all go along with your plan, but like, yeah, I hear you help us work through how we could do that better that ask for, actually, I need you to sign up to this because visibility is the, the, the thing, right? We want that visibility of what the priorities are and what people are working on. 
you know, well, help me understand how we could do that better. And that ask back, I think, is a, is a really important component too. Um, and, you know, sense check that level of engagement back. In this particular case, that appeared to be all that this individual needed to do. Um, they sort of fell off the radar and, and, um, and, and kind of didn't pursue it. But it, I think that was a little bit about um, the, the acknowledgement that was going on. So I think there's a few pieces. There's the acknowledgement that I hear you and I hear what you're saying. And I recognize the problem and the struggle and what's motivating you to put the solution on the table. Um, there's the deliberately not saying no so that it's not pushback. It's actually like I, I hear you and I agree with the problems. And then coupled with that third aspect of, well, how do we do it better? This is the intent. This is what we're going for, right? So if it's not this thing and you're saying it's this other solution, like talk through the choices about how that plays out in, in various scenarios or let's come up with another way of doing it that still achieves that outcome that we all agree on and going back to the intent and the purpose. Um, and yeah, in, in this particular case, it worked out and it, that all sort of rattled through. Sometimes it can be a longer conversation, but I think the important bit is to to always say yes. So, you know, in yourself, when there's an ask on you, how do I go back to this person and say yes, because that's about not necessarily going along with the solution that they've proposed or the thing they're putting in place, but it's about acknowledgement of the fact that you've heard their problem. It's about acknowledgement of um, the fact that maybe things aren't working exactly as you would like. Um, it gets you out of that back and forth, black and white, justifying why you were doing one thing and a decision on one thing. And it actually opens up a creative space for generative conversations, you know, problem solving and collaboration and, and coming up with new ideas. It puts you in that space of creativity rather than shutting you down into that space of yes, no, back and forth, fight or flight, survival mode stuff. Uh, and then that, that piece around the yesable proposition so that when you are going to someone, um, making sure that you are crafting something in a way that means that they can actually sign up for it. It's not outside of their ability to say yes to. You're not asking your call center manager to implement an entire demand capture process across the organization. Clearly they can't say yes to that, but maybe it's about we can actually run a prototype for two weeks and then let's go in and work out how to get some engagement once we've done that first piece. Uh, so that was all I wanted to share with you today. Just to, the contrarian in me needed to um, tell you to stop saying yes last week and then absolutely say yes all the time this week. Uh, so I hope you've got something out of that little vlog. Hit me up, send me a comment, let me know. And uh, yeah, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having an awesome, awesome week. I hope you might be getting some sunshine a bit like we are at the moment. And uh, yeah, take care. I'll see you again soon. Thanks.